My name is Mark Jacobson. I'm the founder and executive director of Uplift Aeronautics and the Syria Airlift Project. I'm also a C-17 pilot in the Air Force and I'm currently doing a PhD in political science at Stanford and I'm running Uplift uh, in my free time. All right. Last March, I was in eastern Turkey doing research among Syrian refugees. And at the time, these mass sieges were in effect of entire neighborhoods where the Syrian government and various militias were starving out entire neighborhoods and deliberately using medical deprivation as weapons. And as I was hearing these stories, people would ask me as a US cargo pilot, why don't you guys come in and do something? Why can't you deliver aid in these places? And the answer is, big cargo planes will get shot down in places like this. But as I was hearing these stories and personally seeing the devastation of the war, it really affected me and got me thinking that there surely has to be a way to get something through to these places in the 21st century. So our mission, in the biggest possible sense, is to help make the use of starvation and medical deprivation obsolete as weapons of war. The way we plan to do that is by creating a new paradigm for delivering humanitarian aid inside conflict zones, places that are inaccessible to traditional aid organizations. The aircraft design that we're using right now is the XUAV Talon. It's a commercially available radio control kit. That's uh, what it was originally designed for. We just bought it off Hobby King. It's a Chinese company that manufactures these airframes. Um, heavily modified for our specific use, which is to be able to deliver packages. So um, as with almost any RC aircraft, especially the electronic side, uh, there's a lot of options that are up to the designer or builder or person who wants to fly it. I mean, what battery you're going to use, what motor you're going to use, and that's going to be a big part of our testing going forward. We have flown up to a kilogram and a half on these airframes right now, again, with not much optimization, and we think we can probably get two kilograms out of them. The new aircraft that one of our team members is designing, a completely custom airframe, should be able to do five kilograms, and we're targeting for a 100-kilometer round-trip flight with that. The, the technology that we are using for this aircraft, the part that makes it the unmanned aerial system, is 3D Robotics uh, Autopilot Module, um, but it's their hardware running uh, the Arduplane open source um, autopilot software. And we're also using the 3D Robotics Compass and Magnetometer Module to help with the navigation on that. And then for the other electronics, it's mostly just uh, commercially purchased uh, RC stuff for the servos, the engine controllers, the motors, and uh, batteries, stuff like that. So the questions about security are very good ones. We've known from the beginning this is an issue, bringing UAVs into conflict zones. The first thing I'll say is that this technology is here. Everyone is getting access to it, and the bad guys already have it. My philosophy is the bad guys have this technology, they're going to get it. Let's give the good guys a chance. With that said, we're taking every precaution to make sure that only the good guys get access to our planes. We've got a custom failsafe where if these planes go down in Syria, we'll actually physically damage the autopilots so they can't be reused. It's a feature we've been able to build in thanks to the open source nature of the software and hardware. Our next step now is to take it overseas and show that it can work in a field environment. We're hoping to do a pilot project in Turkey this summer, but that will really depend on whether or not we can get the right legal and political permissions to do this, which is an open question. We have every intent of complying with U.S. law, Turkish law, doing this in a way that's safe, responsible, and legal. So right now we're focused on trying to get the permissions to go do a proof of concept in Turkey, and hopefully this summer. If we can get that one first plane over the border successfully delivering humanitarian supplies and making it safely back out, to me that's a big win. It shows that we've at least opened up this new paradigm for how aid can be delivered. And where that goes from there, remains to be seen. I think this can scale, I think we can do a lot of good, and this can continue. But my goal right now is to get that one first delivery and just show that this can work. If you really have a good idea that helps people and you're committed to seeing it through, help will come. We've had a lot of times when I was ready to quit, I just couldn't handle it and didn't think we were going to overcome some obstacle. But because people believe in what we're doing, help shows up and has always shown up to get us through those challenges. If you're trying to tackle a big social problem, you need to find some way to start working on it. Getting the work done is the hardest part. You just have to work and work and work, and you've got to set goals that you can achieve. Our very first goal was just to get an airplane in the air on camera to show that we were serious about actually flying things. That first plane barely flew, but it flew, and we were able to get enough support out of that to keep going and keep going and keep going, and we just keep moving the goalposts farther and farther. 
and uh, you have to start somewhere doing the work. Don't look for others to do it. I've hoped all along that someone would come along and take this off my plate and with better resources to go do it. And I've realized over time there is nobody else, it's just us. So there's no substitute for rolling up your sleeves and getting to work.